alkenes undergo bromination in the allylic position upon exposure to NBS and light or a radical initiator. Allylic bromination is a radical process in which NBS acts as a source of a steady but small concentration of bromine. The structure of NBS is shown here. The reaction begins with the hemolysis of a few molecules of NBS by light. The NBR bond breaks evenly to produce succinamide radical and bromine radical. The bromine radical is the active species involved in propagation step one. It abstracts a hydrogen from the allylic position of the substrate. This affords an allylic radical as well as HBr. It's important to note that the allylic radical enjoys resonance stabilization. The HBr that was produced in propagation step one, then protonates an unreacted molecule of NBS. Bromide then attacks the bromine atom on the conjugate acid of NBS, thereby cleaving the weak NBR bond. This yields succinamide, a byproduct of the reaction, as well as bromine. This bromine will be needed for propagation step two. It's useful to pause and take note of the significance of the two preceding steps. First, HBr that was formed in propagation step one has been consumed by reaction with NBS. Secondly, a molecule of bromine that is needed for the reaction to continue has been produced. In this simple example, the two resonance forms of the allylic radical are identical to one another due to the molecule's symmetry. Consequently, either may be used in propagation step two, and the same product will result either way. In propagation step two, the allylic radical abstracts a bromine atom from Br2. This yields the allylic bromide product, and it also affords a new bromine radical which can enter back into propagation step one, continuing the cycle of propagation steps, making this a chain reaction. Termination steps simply explain the fate of the few remaining radicals that are left over once the reaction has neared completion. It's important to note that the vast majority of the product is formed during propagation step two. This reaction is somewhat unusual in that it consists of both heterolytic and homolytic steps. There are two ionic steps using regular mechanistic arrows that explain the formation of succinamide and bromine from NBS and HBr. However, the rest of the steps involve radicals and therefore utilize fishhook arrows. As we move into a specific example, we could consider the bromination of cyclohexene in its allylic position using NBS in light. The process begins with the homolysis of NBS. This yields the bromine radical that will be needed for propagation step one. In propagation step one, the bromine radical abstracts a hydrogen atom from the allylic position of cyclohexene. This affords HBr as a byproduct and an allylic radical. Although there are many hydrogens in this molecule, it is only by abstracting one of the four equivalent allylic hydrogens that a resonance stabilized radical can be formed. The resonance structures of this radical are shown here and are equivalent due to the symmetry of the molecule. At this point, between propagation step one and two, we see an interlude for the two ionic steps using regular mechanistic arrows that explain how NBS and HBr form succinamide and bromine. 
first, NBS is protonated by HBr, yielding its conjugate acid. Next, bromide attacks the bromine atom of the conjugate acid of NBS, forming the critical molecule of Br2 that is needed for propagation step 2. Since the two resonance forms of the allylic radical are completely equivalent in this case due to the molecule symmetry, either one can be used in propagation step 2 to afford the same product. The allylic radical abstracts a bromine atom from Br2. This forms the allylic bromide product as well as regenerating the bromine radical that is needed for propagation step 1. In the preceding example, a stereocenter was formed during the course of the reaction. Since the radical is sp2 hybridized and therefore has trigonal planar or flat geometry, the bromine atom can be added from either side. As a result, the product is produced as a racemic mixture of enantiomers. Regiochemistry may sometimes be a concern in allylic bromination reactions. This can be highlighted by considering the allylic bromination of 3-methyl cyclohexene. The reaction begins with the expected homolysis of NBS, which affords the bromine radical needed for propagation step 1. In propagation step 1, bromine radical abstracts a hydrogen atom so as to make the most stable radical intermediate possible. By abstracting the hydrogen atom from the tertiary allylic position, a radical is formed that is both tertiary and resonance stabilized. That resonance stabilization is shown here. At this point, we expect the interlude between propagation steps 1 and 2 that explain how we form bromine and succinamide from NBS and HBr. Remember that this process begins with the protonation of NBS by HBr, and then bromide attacks the bromine atom of the conjugate acid of NBS affording a molecule of Br2. That is going to be needed in propagation step 2. In propagation step 2, abstraction of a bromine atom will yield the final allylic bromide products. However, in this instance, the two resonance forms of the allylic radical are not identical to one another, so we should consider the reaction of each. The abstraction of bromine by each of these allylic radicals yields two regioisomeric allylic bromide products. We can add an extra dimension to the preceding example by considering stereochemistry. In fact, in this example, the reactant contained a stereocenter and both of the products contain stereocenters as well. If the stereochemistry of the substrate were specified, it's not really all that important because that stereochemical information is lost at the radical intermediate stage. Remember that the radical intermediate formed at this center will have trigonal planar or flat geometry, and that is how the stereochemical information is initially lost at that center. But then, during propagation step 2, a bromine atom may be added to either side of that flat radical. This will yield both enantiomers of both regioisomeric products. And so this reaction produces two sets of enantiomers, one for each regioisomeric product. In summary, NBS and light, or a radical initiator, can be used to brominate an alkene in the allylic position. The reaction is a chain reaction 
that proceeds via a resonance-stabilized allylic radical. Any site in the molecule bearing radical character through resonance can be brominated in propagation step two. This leads to the possibility for the formation of regioisomeric products. Furthermore, if a stereocenter is formed during the reaction, both configurations will be produced at that center. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.